Okay, I'm Ben Nickley and I work with Leslie Bullock in the uh, Avian Ecology Lab. So understanding species distributions is a key uh, aim of ecology. Um, and where species are distributed in a landscape is the result of a behavioral process known as habitat selection. Um, species have evolved to select habitat that increases their overall fitness. So there are many features in the landscape that can influence habitat selection. Um, and which features are important um, can be determined by examining spatial patterns in the environment. And this can help illuminate ecological relationships. So a lot of work has been done to understand species distributions. Um, but there are some gaps in our knowledge and there's some room for improvement. Um, one area, especially for vertebrate taxa, where there hasn't been enough work done is um, on the, the non-breeding uh, periods of the life cycle. There's a large bias um, in studies that just focus on one period in the annual cycle. Um, even though there are important things happening at different stages in the life cycle, like overwintering periods, can be really important uh, for regulating populations because food availability can be quite low at those times and mortality can be high. Um, so also, many species shift their resource use um, in different stages of their life cycle. So to really understand species distributions and the features in the landscape that influence them, we need to understand what's going on at different stages of the life cycle. For example, for our butterflies up here, during the summer, they associate um, with habitat that's open and that provides a food resource like these thistles. Um, whereas in late summer, they need to move into mature forest where they lay their eggs on their host species. In this case, it would be tulip poplar. So including other aspects of the annual cycle is important, um, but also comparing habitats can be really important for uh, revealing key structural features in the environment that support species. Um, if you have a number of sites that vary on a number of environmental factors and species are distributed across those sites, um, you can start to understand where the limits are of their niches um, and areas that overlap in certain features and that are occupied um, will tell you a lot about what features are selected for and what are important for species persistence. So, in order to include um, information on different seasons and compare habitat types and increase the complexity of our work, we need new methods. And fortunately, um, there's been a lot of advances in species distribution models that allow us to incorporate information um, from habitat features um, into a model that can explain changes in distribution across seasons. So these models are also useful, not just looking at seasonal effects on distribution, but also how anthropogenic changes in the environment um, can influence colonization and extinction rates among patches. So for my work, I want to utilize new methods to get at a basic question in ecology. What drives species distributions? And I'm studying this in a species um, that's declining um, and that also uses complex habitat types. So I just want to go over a few of the life history traits that are relevant for the red woodpecker. Um, it's found in diverse number of habitats. You just keep going through these. Um, it's a facultative migrant, so it has these uh, seasonal movements, but often, especially in the southeast, it'll stay in the same general area. Um, it uses different resources in different seasons, and it's a declining species, so it's really important that we uh, know what kind of habitat features are important for this, this species in different seasons. Also, it's a primary excavator, so it's uh, an ecosystem engineer. Um, so the species persistence is very important for other cavity nesters, secondary, cav secondary cavity nesters. So uh, where I want to study this bird is at AP Hill, um, which is in uh, northern Virginia in a landscape that um, is very large, primarily forested, and has a very complex environment. So um, it's structurally uh, diverse, um, a good area to kind of look at uh, different habitat types 
and um, which habitat types are being selected for, and then which features are important within these habitat types for the red woodpecker. All these uh, three, savanna, wetland, and close canopy forest, um, are occupied by red woodpeckers and are important for the species at different times of the life cycle. So my overarching question is, what ecological features influence red woodpecker distribution? And so splitting this down into sort of other questions, I want to know if there's any evidence for um, keystone structures in the environment. These are structures that um, the red woodpecker needs to uh, occupy a certain site. And I predict that certain sites um, will, or occupied sites will have features that are in common. That, that su suggests that those features are crucial for the species persistence. Um, also, I want to know if there's differences in the habitats that are selected um, among seasons. And I expect that there certainly will be um, occupancy uh, in the summer is probably going to be in areas that provide more open habitat um, where these birds can utilize their fly catching strategy. Whereas in the winter, uh, I expect we'll see an association with oak species as the red woodpecker is mass dependent requires oaks in the winter. Um, is there a spatial arrangement of habitat that's an important predictor? Um, this is taking um, landscape ecology perspectives and applying them at uh, finer spatial scales. Um, the red woodpecker is generally thought of as a generalist species um, that doesn't have really strict uh, habitat requirements. But I think that it's more of a mosaic specialist species and that it needs uh, contrasting patches in the landscape um, in order to uh, fulfill its life history requirements. Um, so colonization and extinction rates, are they going to vary among habitat types? I think they will. Wetlands, I expect, are going to have higher extinction rates because they're going to be utilized in the breeding season, but they're not going to be important in the winter because they don't present, uh, provide mass. And I think that we'll see that low quality sites are going to have higher extinction rates um, and lower occupancy in general. And just by examining occupancy um, and extinction rates, that can help us sort of determine and evaluate habitat quality in one way. Um, so this is A.B. Hill. Uh, I counted birds at all of these sites where there are points. Um, you could just go through this stuff. Um, and then took vegetation measurements, and I measured uh, a number of uh, vegetative and structural characteristics that I thought are going to be important uh, for the species. And then I'm going to use my vegetation data in combination with my detection data um, to inform my occupancy models and see what features in the landscape are important for the red woodpecker. Um, so in the future, I uh, also want to include nest monitoring to look at um, success in different habitat types, breeding success, because that's important for demography, and also look at foraging behavior and investigate if there's different foraging strategies that are utilized in different habitats. Thank you.